Here's my dad and my uncle. They each won the PGA Championship. That's the Wanamaker Trophy. We used to go to Augusta National every year, and my dad was on the tournament committee there. So he and a couple guys would drive around early in the morning before each tournament day and set the exact pin locations and tee locations. And I was just a little kid, and I would just sit in a golf cart, ride around, kind of when I learned how to keep my mouth shut. It wasn't odd for Coach Bear to be around a guy like Arnold Palmer or Sam Snead or any number of great players in the late 60s and early 70s. A couple of funny Ryder Cup pictures. There's Arnold Palmer and Billy Casper. You pick up some really interesting information that can be really helpful to you going forward as a golfer. It's allowed me to understand competition on a different level, be able to feel comfortable with competition at that kind of level, and how to prepare for anything. Good tempo here. Close. I think you should hit some chips. You've got that good basic chip. Just kind of keep adding to your repertoire of chips. Assistant coach John Paul Bear grew up around golf royalty. Now the three-time All-American who finished third in the 1993 NCAA championship is putting his lifetime of experience to work at his alma mater. This is a shot you get on a par five a lot of times. Good. Very good. The game has changed a bit when it comes to technique or equipment, but the emotional side of golf will never change. You're fighting this incredible golf course when you're, when you're showing up at a national championship and he knows how hard that is. Since he didn't quite get to the mountain, he recognizes maybe some of the mistakes that happened in his path that maybe he can eliminate for them. When you have that trust there with your players, I mean, that makes me feel like I'm doing a lot of things right. I can recall like when you're playing well, when you're setting up and that hand is just like that, your left arm is right there. I mean, it just looks so strong yet so in control. It was at national championships my freshman year. It's the final round, and as you can imagine, it's nerve-wracking. And He's been carrying his umbrella all week, and it hasn't rained at all. He looks at the forecast on the ninth green and goes, I'm going to put this umbrella away. He's like, it's not going to rain. He's like, I checked the radar, it's 0% for the rest of the day. We got as far out on the golf course as you can get. And there's this one tiny little, little shower in the distance. I kind of look at JP like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, no, no, that's, that's nothing. Don't worry about it, we're fine. And finally, it's my turn to hit and it's pouring. I'm the only guy in the group that doesn't have an umbrella. And I'm sitting there just taking rain in the face and so is JP. And these are the biggest raindrops I've ever seen in my life. I mean, the biggest, fattest raindrops you could ever imagine were just standing there, just soaked. They suspend play for a little bit and we're sitting in the van and he looks at me and he goes, well, if this was a wet t-shirt contest, we'd be winning right now. I looked at JP and I was like, I, I am so mad at you right now. And he goes, all right, well, strong finish. We need you to finish strong. <laughs> Coach Bear provides a calming force and a comedic break for Gim and the rest of the Texas golf team, much like his father did for everyone he met. He really believed in treating everybody the same way. Like who, no matter who it is, he loved to go out of his way to do something for somebody else. And he had a real passion about the game of golf. He went on to, to really live a pretty successful life, but he never forgot where he came from. I saw him stand out on tee boxes for hours and hours, as long as people would listen to him. To me, he was just dad. But when we would go somewhere, people would treat him like something much more than dad. And that's when I realized, hmm, maybe there's something about this guy. I always tell him, when you're about to make a decision about our guys, think about what your dad would do. And that's a good thing, because he probably wouldn't make the right move. I know, without a doubt, my dad would be really, really pleased. He would be very happy to know that I am where I am, that I'm working with young people in the game of golf, in a competitive environment, he would be so happy.